based in California. Takahiro Kitamura has been a tattoo artist since 1998. He practiced tattooing under the artist name Horitaka until 2014, after which he took the name, uh, I have a horrible time pronouncing this. <laughs> My job, I was embarrassed to be Japanese, so I'm not going to say it. You can say it later. Uh, since 2002, he has been the owner and operator of State of Grace Tattoo in San Jose, California. And since 2004, he has been the co-founder and co-host of the Bay Area Convention of the Tattoo Arts. He has written and published more than a dozen books on tattoo culture. In 2014, Kitamara curated the exhibition Perseverance, Japanese Tattoo Tradition in a Modern World for the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles. And I should mention Perseverance is actually currently on a two-year tour of uh, Australia and New Zealand, so right now it's in Sydney. So without further ado, let's welcome uh, Takahiro Kitamura. Thanks, Koji. Um, I'd also like to, let's have a round of applause for Koji. Yeah. I think with two exhibitions, I've been like working sort of freelance with this museum for about three and a half years, and uh, I can honestly say without Koji, none of this would happen. So we wish him well in the future and uh, whatever, you know, I'm sure he'll be successful in whatever he ends up doing from here. Um, thank you all for showing up and thanks for seeing the uh, premiere of like the documentary film. I'd like to, uh, where's John Akauli at? John, where are you? Oh, okay. John, and where is uh, Alexander Bazon? Bazon, come out here. Um, I'd just like to say thanks to these two guys. Um, uh, you know, John is an amazing photographer and as we were on, when we're getting ready to do um, the uh, photography for the exhibition that you saw in the museum, it sort of dawned on me like, hey, like, why don't we bring a few extra people, roll some footage, and try to make like a film out of this? So, um, of course, you know, my job is curator, so that means I could debark orders at everyone and not do the work. Um, so what this meant was these guys were pulling like 20-hour days, filming all the time, shooting stuff, um, keeping up with my ridiculous demands. So yeah, let's give uh, John a round of applause. And Alex, where are you? And, um, so, you know, uh, there's also another guy, John Ugto, that couldn't be here today, but he also helped immensely. But um, seriously, thank you guys. Uh, we appreciate your hard work. And, um, you probably want to go to a seat, and then I'll introduce the rest of the, the panel here. So, um, we have uh, Sulapis Steve Looney. Could you please come up here? Steve's the owner of a Pacific Soul Tattoo in Hawaii, and um, initially, actually, this whole exhibition, film, whatever, all started from a talk that Steve and I had where Steve wanted to uh, further, and I think this is very indicative of the loyalty and the love that's felt between masters and apprentices, um, but, you know, he really wanted to do something to honor his, his master, Sulape Alabaya, so what that evolved into is what you see now, like a full-fledged exhibit, and, um, you know, so, of course, he's one of the core members that made this happen. So, Steve Lee. Um, in the film, John, there was an error. Uh, Twingamala Andy Talafiafi yeah. was uh, listed as Salapisi Liufau, but Andy, you want to come on down? <laughs> Andy uh, tattoos in uh, Wellington, New Zealand at Taupo Tatao, and um, also he's a Kiwi Samoan, so he has a really cool accent, but he was also a very integral part of this exhibition, so, yeah. And C, where are you? Let's welcome Sulapisi Liufau, owner of A-Town Tattoo here in Garden Grove. Um, also, like of note, uh, throughout the exhibition, if you look at C's work within the exhibition, it's all machine work. And uh, during the course of the making of this, he actually uh, earned his Sulapi title from uh, Patello. So, um, you know, congratulations on that and welcome. And I guess um, I'll sit there and then uh, let's start Koji, do we have someone to run a mic to people for questions? Or, are you? I guess he really is done. <laughs> well, you mentioned in the film the, the integral nature of the, the Tatao. Could you go more into what the elements are of the significance? What does it represent in this transition other than manhood, womanhood, and so on? 
but to give it a more in-depth analysis of what it incorporates. Who wants to? I know all you guys can answer, but. By the way, your shirts are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to hit that one? <laughs> they're being shy. Yeah. Well, now they're shy. <laughs> um, well, thank you. Uh, I, I think just as far as like the meaning of the actual motifs, it kind of just, you know, <coughs> uh, you know, besides just, uh, you know, earning a right as a man or woman in the society, they kind of define our roles and our expectations. Um, to to our families, to our children, to our parents, um, you know how we conduct ourselves within society, how we uh, greet visitors, uh, you know from from other cultures, other communities, into our own community. So they really do lay down kind of the blueprint of, uh, you know, I think what the world would expect if they ran into a Polynesian or a Samoan. So. Well, how do the designs relate to these ideals? Oh, um, it's through nature. I think one of the things that um, Zito. I see the woman on your leg. Yes. Well, I mean, this is <laughs> another beautiful part of nature, right there. Um, you know, you know, throughout, uh, I guess, the development of of you know the ancient tattooing and art form. One of the things that we identified with was nature, because that's all we had around us, and we took. Uh, animals and the characteristics that we found admirable and we tied them to ourselves with these designs. So that's what the connection was for us, you know, being from uh, a community and a culture where uh, that's all we had, you know, was the ocean and the land and the, and the animals around us, the fish and the sea. And so, you know, we could only look around us and, and see what we could find and take to make ourselves uh, better human beings to ourselves and to those around us. Um, I think uh, just to further elaborate on that, there is a lot of coded communication. Um, I think, for example, like the male tattoo starts with a form in the middle back of Ba'ab, which is a canoe. Without the canoes, the Polynesian islands would not have been settled. It's also symbolic of a canoe that carries your family. And I think um, one thing that C has done in the catalog and also within the exhibition is he's done very detailed diagrams of what each component is. Like this part stands for the land mass of Samoa. This stands for this binding. This stands for this fruit. Like almost to the point where I like, you know, I almost feel that like some tattooers will feel that that's guarded information that should be, shouldn't be published. But I think the Sulape family has always been about education and sharing, even to the point where they're helping other Polynesian groups like revive their traditions. So I think, um, you know, um, if you want like a more like a so almost point by point analysis of like a Malafia or a Malu. Um, we have this amazing catalog for $24.99 available. <laughs> but I mean, but the information is there. So I think the sentiments echoed there. Uh, I don't know if they still do it, but then tattoo was quite, quite a bit of a thing in Japan, but currently mostly done by Yakuza. It seems like a outlook is entirely different. Uh, can you comment on that? Okay, um, I'll answer this one, but I don't want to monopolize the panel here. <laughs> but um, the question was that um, in Japan, like the Japanese tattoo is associated with the yakuza, and um, you know it's kind of has a very negative stereotype. Uh, that's absolutely true. In fact, like right now, there is legislation, like kind of like curbing tattooing in Japan. Um, if you have tattoos, you can't go to like a public bathhouse or a swimming pool, things like that. And there just is like a generally negative association. Um, now, if you go to Samoa where it's like, you know, I, I, for example, when interviewing the Prime Minister of Samoa, he was admiring my tattoos. I mean, it's probably the one country in the world where if I took my shirt off, I'd get more respect rather than less. So it's a great place. <laughs> but, um, but I think it just speaks to like, even like in the documentary when they talk about like chiefs having tattoos, like it's such a different way to look at tattooing. Um, it, it has not been marginalized. And in fact, in the face of colonization, in the face of the Christian missionaries, it helped hold Samoan culture intact. So it definitely has a very a different place in society than in Japan and probably anywhere in the world, really. Yad a Michelle Yanishia, Tkachini Inchle, Dine Inchle, Tkachini Inchle. I'm Navajo from the Navajo Reservation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for this wonderful film. Inside the film, there was a gentleman who spoke of Tatao as traditional in the Samoan community. And in the same breath, he mentioned God. And so I'm 
curious if there is still a lot of um, cognitive dissonance going on with the differentiation between your traditions and then afterward European contact and the God that they praise. I can't really uh, speak on how things were beforehand. Um, I can say that when uh, Christian missionaries uh, arrived, that was the one part of the culture, integral part of the culture that's still alive today that was kept intact. Nobody can really say for sure how or, and we all know the reason why, because uh, it, it meant a lot for us and it spoke to everybody to show that these tattooed people are examples of how you should lead your life. Um, being that you, it's a mark of service. And um, as far as like religion is concerned and how it's been kept alive, uh, <coughs> Okay, I'm gonna try and answer this. Hopefully I can answer your question. If not, I just didn't understand it. <laughs> um, yeah, well, in my belief, um, traditional tattooing has always been in Samoa. Christianity came after. But it's one thing they could never take away. Um, so, I guess they probably had to live side by side. And that's something that's carried on. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago that with inside the churches in Samoa, um, they allowed you to, because in Samoa, tattooing was because of Christianity that came through. If you got tattooed within the church, your, your roles within the church would drop, you know, you're, I guess in a way be suspended for a certain period of time and then you'd be able to carry on your roles within the church again. But being that the Tatao was so strong and it's always been there, now it's the, the laws have been changed within the churches, which allows us even if to this day now, if you do receive a traditional tattoo, your roles within the church do not get suspended. So I think it's something that's always been there. Christianity came in, but they could never take over what was originally part of Samo. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can say you're rewriting the scriptures. I guess so, because in a way. Yeah, it's spilling blood, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other? I was just wondering if you could speak to maybe the tools of the trade, the, you know, the the application of it. Say maybe like the ink in the, that you're using in traditional is it different from say what you would use in a gun, or and maybe what your preference is in terms of tattooing. You know, do you would you do you prefer using a gun, or would you rather use traditional tools? It just depends. And then and we saw in the, the video too uh, the number of people it takes to do a traditional type tattoo. So maybe just some ideas on all those. Thank you. Um, I think with the tapping, with the traditional way of uh, Samoan tattooing, it serves its purpose, which is for the tatau. Uh, machine work has nothing to do with the, with the tatau. As far as the, uh, the equipment or supplies that are used, now we've adapted to using um, American inks or you know European inks, simply because uh, the way you process the ink back in the old days is a lot of work. And um, you, I would suggest for you to buy the catalog if you really want to read about <laughs> all of that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we've uh, you have to change with time, especially with the tools and uh, with uh, being that they've traveled conventions and um, tattoo in, in the public and all that. Health department needs to recognize and, and also approve of these things up. So, which is the reason why the bone tools are switched to using uh, stainless steel needles now, was because of that, just so we can practice in, in, the open, in public. Um, and, and yeah, like I said, with the inks, you know, it's a long process. It's, it had to do with both families were involved, the, the 
Tao family, the family that's uh, getting tattooed, they would have to go out into the jungle and get all those, you know, the, the kukui nuts. And, you know, it, it's a really long process and had a lot of spiritual uh, ties to it, which a lot of it isn't practiced today, which I can, um, I guess, relate back to what she had mentioned before. With, uh, and sorry, I didn't quite understand the question earlier. Uh, but hopefully, does that uh, kind of answer your question? I can elaborate more if you. Uh, that's fine. I just don't know if anybody had a preference on what? if they would rather oh, have a preference. traditional or okay. the machine. Or I'll take. I'll, I'll take the first little bit of it, and then I'll pass it on to this guy. <laughs> so, well, so, like myself personally, uh, I don't use the traditional tools. Um, I just use machine, um, basically because if I get to travel like as I am now, I'm over here in America, all my tattoo equipment fits in a little bag. <laughs> this guy, if he travels, he has to take two stretches with him. My stuff fits in one suitcase. <laughs> he has to buy two seats for his <laughs> stretches. Huh? It's a cost effective for me. <laughs> Easier. <laughs> But then as well, you know what I mean? It depends as well on, on the person. Um, going back to how you said how we're adapting from inks to machine. Um, I guess now we, we've adapted to the way we are tattooing now with the machine from traditional, uh, going from the inks. Uh, the old traditional way of doing the ink, which is the llama, which was you had to collect uh, was it candle nut? Huh? Candle nut. It's a nut, and you had to burn that to get the ashes, and then mix it with. Back in the day, they would use water, kerosene. Um, so just hygienically now, and the longevity of tattoos, that's what we've adapted to. So we're just, I don't know, for healing process, hygienically, you know, we have to adapt as for the future of. The tattoo to make it last longer and everything. Um, like Suba Steve Looney said as well, with the with the instruments that we use, going from bone to stainless steel, same thing. So we're be we're able to practice in public as well, um, and within the the health and regulations as well of nowadays. Um, so that's me speaking from using the just the machines. I'm gonna pass it on to Suba uh, C. Um, and you'll explain a bit more as he uses the traditional tools. So, we take six suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, uh, you know, working with the machine, uh, it is a sole job. It's, um, it's a bit easier, it's more convenient. Um, when we work traditionally, it's, uh, it, it's very painstaking. Um, it's not only hard on us, it's hard on everybody around us, um, just the wear on our bodies, the, the family, and then not only that, but the expectations that they place on uh, the people getting their, their traditional tattoo performed. So it's, it's a much uh, more involved process. I, you know, I'd be really hesitant to say I preferred one over the other because right now, you know, my hips are really sore, my hands sore. I think, uh, you know, we had three of the boys in here uh, today that we were, uh, we finished a model this morning at about five o'clock because the girl's from Alaska and they, uh, you know, need to finish. And I had originally booked for today and I was like, oh, I cannot. So, you know, we didn't work the graveyard shift last night, but um, it is a lot more gratifying to be able to work traditionally and, um, you know, to see the look on people's faces when they complete the tatao as well as uh, the family, you know, if I'm working by machine, they're gonna leave that person at the shop, tell them I'll get you an Uber. But like, you know, <laughs> last night we were working traditionally and we had about 15 to 20 members of the family um, throughout the whole night, checking on us, bringing us, you know, whatever we needed. And then they ran out and got us food at 5.30 in the morning, you know, to just do the respectful thing and feed us afterwards. and. Um, it is, it's gratifying to know that you can give something to the family and, and it, um, it's, you know, there's, there's no comparison, uh, you know, and, and while we tattoo with the machine with the same intent to be able to 
uh, connect people with feelings that they have or, or uh, ideas that they want to express in the art on their skin, um, just to be able to try to tattoo traditionally and, and in this setting um, with the Sudawape family and, and Samoan culture, there's really no comparison. Um, I, I had the opportunity to uh, attend C's uh, Sulawape ceremony, and uh, my, which I, I thought was beautiful. I, did, I had no idea how involved that was. My question is, what is what is the process, or, or how are Sulawape chosen, or what is the process for them to be uh, acknowledged as a as a Sulawape? And the second part of that is, how many Sulawapes are there in the world? Let one of the Sulapes answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Let the first Sulape answer that. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for the question. As, <laughs> excuse me. As far as the process of being chosen, uh, you'd have to ask the old man about that. But I would have to say it's all about service, which is what this means, huh? this tattoo that we wear. Um, and I'm sure through service like with Tulapa C, myself, I've been with the family now for 15 years. I've been serving under this family and loyally and with all my heart, and mainly just to perpetuate the culture and keep this Tatao movement going, and as well to serve as, uh, I mean, as well as to say thank you to our mentor. Um, what was the second part of the question? How many are there? How many are there? Oh. Um, I can't say for sure because outside of us that are that are blood Sulapis, like Si and myself, outside of the the actual family, I think there's about um, maybe eleven or so that are practicing altogether. Maybe not all practicing, but there's about eleven or so that I, through our last conversation that I had with uh, Sua, it was uh, was that number. So it could have grown. I don't. I think Si was. Uh, the, late, the last one. Yeah. The very Born last baby. one. <laughs> um, so I had a question for the tattoo artists as far as um, how significant is it of sharing the story of the tattoo, um, especially to a generation that is still understanding our own history and culture and identity um, with how the tattoo came about. Um, and from what I understand, it starts with a pair of sisters, which is why uh, people get uh, tattooed in pairs with the model and the bell. So how important is it sharing the story of how it came about? I think it is a great importance that we know that part, even though it's a small part of it. I think it is a great importance because not everyone grows up in the hard out Samoan culture. So the Samoan culture is this big, but if you can take this much, this part of that story is a great importance to it. So I guess like anything, like how everyone remembers small little stories like the three little pigs and stuff like that, if you can teach that to, your, to the young, as the time they grow up, it's just carrying it on. Huh? So that, that story there, it's real, it's a part of us, and it means a lot. So I guess, yeah, there's a great importance for the young to know and, and carry it on. Does that kind of answer your question or no? <laughs> Sometimes I get confused. Don't I? I think uh, if, 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 for me, I think it's extremely important. And that was the reason why all this began uh, with the exhibit uh, being put together and then, you know, along with the doc film. Um, a lot of it has to do, like you said, some of us didn't grow up around it, as Andy had mentioned, including myself. You know, I've actually only lived in Samoa maybe, maybe five years out of my life, five to six years. But it was instilled in our home. And I lived out here in California, in SoCal, um, in Hawaii. And uh, no matter where you go as a Samoan, your culture is always with you. Yeah. And if you wear it as a tattoo, for those that live abroad, it's also a symbol of identity. And so for, for myself, being half Samoan, it was really important for me to try and um, share this part of our culture with everybody, especially it's something that I'm really passionate about. And the family that I serve with is, you know, I really respect them, and they're also very respected around the world. And they've made the biggest impact 
and Polynesian tattooing than more than anybody else I could say. Um, simply because they want to share. They're not keeping it to themselves. And I think it's important, otherwise it won't, it won't live on. Otherwise it would just end with us, you know? Then that would be pretty sad for the generation coming up. Especially for some of us that have families as well, you know, have children. I definitely want to teach my kids. You know, and no matter what path they, they go down in life, at least they'll understand it. I just want to Can say, I jump in on that real quick? Yeah. Oh. Um, I just, Do I need the mic? Okay. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of jump in on this because I feel like, you know, for me being, you know, not only Afkasi, but born and raised here in the States, you know, like, you know, these other gentlemen over here grew up in a, you know, very saturated um, Samoan community where there was, there was a lot of influence and had a lot of close ties to Samoa for, but for us, you know, for me and myself, the other, you know, kids and, you know, young people that have been growing up out here in the States and we have really these um, very super superficial influences of our Samoan society or any other, you know, Tongan, Fijian, whatever it is. And so for me to be able to get my, my tatao, you know, I, I've always heard this thing called Mulegu. And, you know, it was something that I dressed with uh, Tufunga before getting God, and it was one of the best things I've ever done. You know, I started learning to speak Samoan after I was 30 years old, and if it wasn't for the assistance of my tatao and the motivation of having this responsibility placed on me, um, I may not have gotten as far as I, as I did. So I think, you know, as far as the young community today, I think it's very important for them, um, not only to just be tattooed, but, but to be exposed to the culture, to the experience, and then wear something that they have to live up to. I'd just like to elaborate a little bit. Like, we're here at the Japanese American National. Like, it says the word democracy behind me. Um, and that my area of expertise is more of Japanese tattooing. However, throughout the course of going to Samoa, New Zealand, doing these things, what we realize is that, you know, like all cultures, there isn't an agreement. There is no unilateral, especially with a country with an oral tradition, you know, and a history of colonization. Like, for example, like, there's people that, you know, there's still debate about whether Fiti means the island of Fiti or Fiji. You know, and that you, like, we, <laughs> the we've seen people get really heated about that in some way, as you can imagine. And I think for this museum and for us, we wanted to give an opportunity to show a culture that we thought was beautiful, that was amazing, and let the people from within that culture speak. Now, is the Sulapa family the only voice? No, certainly not. But I do feel that they've worked so hard to become like this, you know, there's always salient figures and they've done so much for history. And I think that all these people here have worked, I mean, they've definitely earned a voice. And I think if anything, I think of this as like, I hope that somebody would see this and it's like an entry. You know, they could read about it. Like some people just say like, oh cool, tattoos, those are cool. Other people are gonna read into it, be like, oh, this means this, I want to learn more. So I think that's really the goal of this exhibition. And I think it's to, to put, you know, sort of start that dialogue. Um, do certain of the designs have certain symbolism? And when you have, I don't know, a customer or client or whatever, did they tell you what they want, or do you have just certain designs that you typically use on everyone? <laughs> okay, uh, some of the symbols that are inside the traditional tattoo, individually, they do have certain meanings. Um, but I'd say, as in a whole, what it, what it really means is all about courage, it's about family, it's about strength. Um, so a lot of the people that I'm talking about, me, because I do the machine work, so a lot of people that come through uh, for tattoos, um, the meanings that they want behind their tattoos are stories that they want to represent that on certain things that have happened in their life. So the majority of the people that do come through, um, they want their tattoos to represent family, which majority of the, you know, or certain, 
certain uh, circumstances that happened in their life. So yes, they do have meanings. Um, and then some get it as in a whole for a bigger thing. Maybe one last question, and then we'll do the signing. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay, we have two questions. We'll do two questions. Then. Yeah. Is that okay? Let's get one question for John. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any questions for the? Um, so you have achieved the highest learning and service and hard labor, and you are really living the Samoan uh, Tatao culture. But I see now um, Polynesian, you know, sometimes sort of tribal um, tattoo artists all over the world even, and it seems some of them so sort of take some flash that's in some book and then they extend it a bit. They're, I don't know, from Brazil. <laughs> they really know nothing that you know. Um, of course, there's a huge, um, from, from that bad example all the way to what you guys do. How do you feel about this? Um, this appropriation of your culture, as well as maybe of the, it, it, it gets expanded all over the globe. Yeah. And I should say, everyone who's here needs to buy the catalog. I have it, and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess that, that question there comes up a lot. I guess not just for Polynesian or Samoan tattoos, but I guess all genres of tattooing. Um, for, for myself, that, I guess that's one of the biggest problems we have. Um, but I guess the person at fault for that, I would say, would probably be the person called Google. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? That's what spreads our work across the world. The problem is, is because people on the other side of the world see it as, oh, maybe this is a new trend and they are applying these certain designs but do not know the actual meanings behind these designs. So that's, that's the biggest problem for us. I guess that's probably one of the reasons why we have put out this exhibition. Um, and then with the catalog as well, um, with certain meanings of certain designs in there. Um, but just like any great artist, not all the designs are in there, right? so we can't show you all our tricks, but at least the majority of the main designs that we do use, the meanings are in there. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's the biggest problem right now is especially people in, uh, in Europe and stuff, seeing it maybe as a trend um, and just plastering these designs on people without knowing what they are giving out. Where coming from our side, it's a part of history. There's a lot of meaning behind it a lot of money behind us. So yeah, I guess with this exhibition, hopefully we can set some record straight. And I'll, yeah, that's my point of view. So I'll hand it down the line and they can give you their point of view, add it together, transform on. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> still relate on what, uh, sorry. What uh, Andy uh, just said, um, yeah, he's absolutely correct. You know, how do we feel about it? I don't think anybody feels good about it. You know, your designs being used by other people that doesn't belong to. You know, but then again, uh, like we had mentioned earlier, and like uh, Andy just said, part of this exhibit was to educate the public and anybody who had questions about what the Malu and Tatao meant, but through the eyes of the Suwape family, which I think is really important as far as uh, you want to um, understand the real meaning. You know? So with this, ex with this exhibit is what we try to do is by sharing what we, we can allow others to see and give them the correct meaning of it and the way it actually is, and the way it's been practiced from back then, all the way up until present day. Anybody else?
Can we have a question for the filmmaker? Actually, we'll, we'll ask one more, oh, and, we'll, and then we'll ask one for me. Okay, yeah. Somebody think of a good one for this no. kid. <laughs> <laughs> what a question over here. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for the panel. The, pin, the film is excellent. It's shot beautifully. Whoever was the cinematographer, it looks amazing. <laughs> um, I do have a question. There was uh, the mention of mana and connecting to mana of the ancestors inside the film. And I just wonder if the, the artists have any routines that you would, or rituals that you perform before doing a tattoo to tap into that mana and connect with the mana of Samoa and the ancestors. I think for us, I can't speak for C, um, because he's tapping, but I don't think, like for us, you know, we're born Christian. I wasn't born in a time where there was no God that I believe in now. So for me, as far as the mana is concerned, it's in you. You, shouldn't, you don't have to pray for it. It's in you. You're born with it, you know? Uh, but it is, um, I guess you could say, like, well, for me, anytime I start a, a, a big uh, job I'm going to do, I do try to think back to my conversations with my mentor, and that sort of thing to mentally prepare myself, but to draw upon any spiritual praise or anything like that, no, I don't, I don't think it's necessary because like I said, it's something that's in you. Yeah, I'm Does that make sense? Um, uh, you know, with the, uh, I think Steve hit it on the nail on the head. It, it's already in us. And one of the things that, you know, I, I've been, I had the opportunity to do is to be able to do to tell for a lot of native um, communities. And so in that, I want to be able to represent them and represent their ancestors and um, represent that. And the only way I can do that is through, through knowledge, through what you know, through what you search out in your life and find out and be able to tie that into this, um, to this act of tattooing and, you know, the sacrifice of shedding blood and, you know, and, and whether it's with Samoans or uh, Tongans or any other Polynesian or the natives over here, you know, it's just a, it's about knowledge. I, you know, with them, <clears throat> we have a couple um, communities up north, uh, the Yurok, uh, Hoopa communities up there that we've been tattooed pretty heavily for the last um, six years. And I've been fortunate enough through, you know, my interactions with them to earn their trust for them to start sharing um, different designs and sharing the stories of those designs and that's where the manas kept us in these stories and you know for us it doesn't matter where you come from what family you come from it's the story about your grandmother your grandfather and that's the story that you're going to give to your children and your grandchildren and that's you know the whole thing about mama is just being able to continue life and continue our beliefs uh, and be able to keep that alive and pass it on okay we have one last question my question is for John. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Give him the one that don't. I don't know what your what your your background is. I don't know if you're a Samoan or Polynesian. Are you? I'm Filipino. Okay. <laughs> I I was curious what the experience has been like for you, because I have gotten a great education personally in the last couple of years watching this this unfold and I was just curious from your perspective what have you learned from this what have you um, gleaned from this this process and this experience no sleep no sleep yeah. <laughs> um, this has been quite an experience it's a uh, it was a crash course on someone culture and and everything that goes along with it I think what I, what, I, I, what I value from it the most is not only the knowledge that these gentlemen up here has share, uh, have taught me and shared with me and the countless other um, individuals and, and people that, we've, that I've met personally and what they're able to share with me in regards to their culture or even personal experience. Um, sitting down with a lot of these guys as well as clients and getting to hear their story was so eye-opening um, in my own personal life. Because everyone goes through their own personal journeys, but when other people are able to 
reflect uh, or are able to express their own and to have that dialogue and have that conversation, I think what I take from this is just more so I was able to, I was able to grow individually. Um, yeah, professionally, that's yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, but I think more so I learned a lot more about building relationships, a long-lasting relationships, uh, family, uh, no sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just more so the camaraderie. It's, uh, we've gone through so much and we were, I was up there in the control tower thing over there and just watching this um, for, the, uh, for the first time this morning. And I was like, wow, you know, it brought back a lot of memories and, and uh, feelings of you know, the past two and a half years now of what we all have gone through. So it's, uh, I think the, what I've learned from this is it's a bit undescribable at the moment, but more so just I'm really glad that I was able to uh, go in this with these guys. And uh, it's been, uh, can't really just, I have, I'm kind of like a loss for words right now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's been, it's been really, it's been really great. Great, let's give a big hand to all of us. Oh. Thanks. Uh, make your last day uh, day on the job a little bit difficult. Now, you know, I, I, you know, with all the questions, I just want to say thank you, everybody. And kind of one thing that would summarize everybody's questions is this man right here. And just in, you know, having the heart to put this on and put this together and then to go through it and then, you know, to learn everything, but then to participate and to lay down and get his to towel and, um, you know, he so quietly knows so much about our culture that it's amazing. And, uh, you know, seeing him on this, uh, on the documentary, I kind of was laughing to myself because seeing this picture of him and Samoa walking around with his shirt off and, you know, it was kind of, he's all tatted up. But to me, that looked, it looked kind of empty in that photo because, you know, I spent some time with this man and, you know, not only him, but his wife Molly and um, just the whole experiences that they, they've gone through. And it's something that you don't need to be Samoan. You don't need to be, you know, uh, anything but yourself and to want to participate. And that's what he's done. And, and that's why a lot of the reason that we're here. So um, just want to say thank you, Taki. And uh, I mean, just you're such an admirable.